This is one of the heartbreaking stories I've seen in recent times. Recently, Lagos State was thrown into mourning, nearly completed 21-story building, gave in and um, deleted lots of people, and some people are still trapped in the rubble. I think this happened on Monday. Eventually, the owner, the managing director of Fosco, was found in the rubble with his friend. Actually, he was on his way to the United States to catch his flight before the man called him to look at the buildings. Hi guys, you're watching M Chicky Series. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. I quite appreciate that. It's good to have you around again. And if you're new to this channel, thank you for clicking on this video. Make yourself comfortable as we get right into this video. Also, hit the subscribe button and turn your notification bell on. That way, you get our latest updates. It is a very sad news that I'm bringing to you guys. Recently, Lagos State was thrown into mourning when nearly completed 21 story building in Ikoi, Lagos, gave in and deleted lots of people. According to the statistics, about 30 something people have given up the ghost. The CEO, the managing director of the first call who is in charge of the building has already the body has been recovered and the rubble together with his friend that was on his way to the airport to catch his flight back to the united states the most heartbreaking part of it is that the man will be celebrating his 50th birthday in the u.s and they were waiting for the man as soon as he comes back from nigeria there are other people that have been discovered that lost their life in this like a youth couple there was a couple they said that was posted to Boronu. she seek for a deployment back to lagos she was among those people and the 26 year old lady Onye Enekwe, who was recently employed as pa her wedding is slated for next month which is really sad this lady is supposed to get married by next month unfortunately she also lost her life in this the 35 year old samuel iwelu who came to nigeria from uk for a wedding at abuja he met a developer who is his friend and he told him about the massive structure he was constructing in lagos then the guy flew to lagos to see the construction and sadly he met his dad there so he made a video before he entered that 21 story building in lagos how do you know you're in lagos my condition says low 15 degrees <laughs> Still sweating, <laughs> you know you're in Vegas, but I love it. Come on, Vegas. Oh, and traffic. And again, the managing director of Fosco, and the man is building about three of these kind of structures. I think one is 16 story. This one that collapsed 21, and the third one which I'm not quite sure the number of flaws. Though looking at the document on the screen, development permit, he was authorized to erect three buildings with 15 floors each. And this was dated on 5th April, 2019. And how he managed to get to 21 story building, I can't explain. There has been lots of building collapses in Lagos, a lot of tragedy around buildings, deleting lots of people. Context. So in 2014, we had a similar, I mean, I'm talking about big collapses now. We've had pockets of smaller ones this year alone in Korodu, in Lagos Island. But the big ones, 2014, recall that church guest house that collapsed. Over 100 people. 2016, we had another one in Lekki, about 34 people did as well. And this one, we're not sure of a casualty figure. And I you see the same story one we keep hearing. Lagos State government said that they've set up this man panel to investigate. After the investigation, do they really carry out the recommendations? I can remember TB Joshua's guest house also collapsed. I don't know who investigated that one. The conclusion they came up with, what happened, that this has been happening in Lagos. Even in Nigeria, I keep also hearing about houses collapses. Is it that government, they don't have regulatory authorities that look into all this? thing that is very shocking to me is that this man, the owner, this Femi Oshubon, based on interview he was granted, there were some things he said that he stopped using professionals. I don't know how you can build a home without the advice of professionals. You just listen to him. When I first came to Nigeria, I believed in consultants so much. If an architect tells me something, I will do whatever he tells me to do. If an I man tells me something, I will do whatever he tells me to do. When my structural engineer tells me something, I do whatever he tells me to do. It was later that I realized that lots of people, they just know about the book. They do not understand the practical aspect of the work. You understand my point? For example, I remember we bought a lot, we bought um, 1,000 kVA generator. It, sorry, they told me to buy 1,000 kVA generator, my money. I decided to buy 800. Guess what? 
we never used 800 we've sold it now the highest we are using is 500 you know so, so i learned a lot so after doing that project out of honest with you i was a little bit frustrated then i went back to invest in abroad i started investing in america in atlanta to be precise so you just had what he said that he stopped using consultant that it seems some of them know theory but they don't know the practical part of it then why can't you look for more qualified consultants people you know that they have practical knowledge at the same time with the theory but there's no way you can do this kind of business without listening to professionals because you're shooting yourself on the leg the building is near to completion and according to him over 50 percent have paid for these homes. I believe that other buildings, they have to be put to structural tests so that they don't put lives in danger. Process. Should an investor have that direct contact with a developer such that you can just say, well, I'm putting my money here. I want to buy this house as it's being constructed. Answer is no, it shouldn't happen because the developer is after his interest and his profit. And you are being sued something that you have very little knowledge about the mechanics or the construction details or how the process are followed through. You need a professional opinion. And that is a no-brainer. It's just, you know, it doesn't, it, it saves you so much more than it can cost you today. You understand? So putting these things in perspective is important. And it's the role of government because citizens also want to do the least in terms of expenditure but government must protect the citizens by all these rules the government should now this is a big opportunity to ensure that no developer should sell directly to the public otherwise there is no check in ensuring that you comply with the regulatory requirements that's period there is corruption everywhere in Nigeria. A lot of things have been compromised in Nigeria. Even the government where they're supposed to do inspection, they will not do that. You give them money, they let it go. We know that. This has really gone to show that government has neglected their duties. They don't bother to supervise anything. Even when they supervise and it's not up to standard, they still let it go. People will want to cut corners. That one is basic. Even bricklayer that is molding your blocks, you want to reduce the quantity of cement to make more money and put more sand. So it's up to you to investigate what he's doing. Failure to do so, you're setting yourself up for disaster. It's as simple as that. And I can't imagine that some people that have lived abroad, they know the standards. Once they get to Nigeria, they want to do whatever they want to do. They throw the standards off the window. They take laws into their hands to do whatever they want to do because they believe that nobody in Nigeria will query it. Even if they query, they can bribe their way through. If government doesn't take care of regulation in Nigeria, a lot of people will go down with it, even in food. Then even the rescue team, I can see they're using Caterpillar, are just packing everything. They say that they gave them life-detecting machine, but they don't know how to use it. That means they send people that are not even trained to rescue people. How would they rescue people? How does it work? It's only in Nigeria that it's getting to three days this thing happened, and people are still on rescue mission. So you think somebody who is trapped under the rubble will still be there till this time? It's really sad that Nigeria is not working. And the people that are taking care of the country who are supposed to be policy makers directing at the affairs of the country, they don't really care. No skills whatsoever. Look at that. Look at that. What if somebody's there? What if somebody's hidden there? So when we're supposed to be saving people, we're actually anyone that has a, a chance of surviving, this is what they've been doing since Monday. Even if you don't have faith that today's um, is, is how many days later. This has been going on since Monday. They said they've got a light detector machine. I had to tell the guy to go on YouTube to go and learn how to use it. Listen, I posted that video as well. I'm telling you guys, they lied to Sawolu that they are using it. They did not use it. They did not use it. They put it by their side. The, the battery wasn't charged. They just got the light locator at what time? And the worst part of it is that people who are qualified don't get job in Nigeria. Why people who know people in government are the ones that apply? Just look at this lady talking about people on rescue mission, how they don't know what they're doing, how she asks them to check on YouTube, and they don't even care. They were busy with whatever they're doing. And because she has a loved one there, so that's the reason why she took it upon herself to be talking. A lot of people are heartbroken around there. You need to see the videos. Oh my god. This is just crying when they hear this off. I think they'll find a way to rectify what the problem is. Solve the problem from the root 
after investigation let them look at the recommendations of the people that investigated make sure that regulatory bodies don't collect bribe when they collect bribe and compromise the quality it becomes a problem the citizens are at risk that situation i and you have found ourselves so i think people need to also find a way to hold all these people accountable i'm gonna sign off here let me know what you guys think about this because it's very heartbreaking it's very sad that people will just wake up in the morning to go to work and they meet their untimely death what they never planned for simply because of the carelessness of one man or people who are working the artisans who are there may god rest their souls Stay healthy and safe. And remember to subscribe to this channel if you're not done already. And I'm going to catch you guys in my next video. Bye and remain blessed.